Hi, welcome to Motorola National Service Training and this segment of the FAST Training Series. Simulcast transmission and paging systems has become a common technique for providing wide area radio coverage in areas where multiple transmitters are required. This is a direct result of the reliability, effective coverage, and the many operational advantages this transmission scheme has to offer. However, the responsibility for ensuring the integrity and proper operation of a well-designed simulcast system still lies in the hands of you, the technician, and your ability to optimize the system correctly after installation. To help you accomplish this task, there is an established procedure for simulcast system optimization known as the two-receiver method. And when implemented properly, you'll be able to properly adjust four parameters that are critical to good simulcast system operation. Carrier frequency, deviation, phase polarity, and phase delay. The proper setup of these four parameters is essential in the areas of the system where multiple transmitter overlap occurs, as illustrated by the shaded areas in Figure 1. If adjacent stations are not matched and optimized correctly, the result will be distorted or seriously degraded reception in these overlapping or what are termed no capture zones. The basic idea behind the two receiver method is to have two monitor receivers tuned to the system frequency and located at a transmitter site. Here the receivers are configured so that one monitors the recovered audio from the local on-site transmitter while the second monitors only the distant adjacent station through an external antenna. The recovered audio signals are then routed to a dual trace scope from the discriminator output of each receiver. At this point the signal can be compared for overall frequency, deviation, and proper phasing. Precise adjustments can then be made to each transmitter so that the signals are matched properly for peak system performance. The adjustments to be made require us to be able to inject a test tone into the common audio source of the system, either directly into the link transmitter or remotely through the paging terminal itself. In this manner, we can zero beat the two transmitters using the recovered audio signal to set frequency in the base station, including any necessary offsets. The local station's delay equalizer can be adjusted to align both traces so that they appear to be in phase with each other. Deviation on both stations can then be matched by adjusting their respective exciter level controls for equal peak-to-peak -peak amplitude traces on the scope. Next, the frequency of the test tone is varied from 300 Hz to 3000 Hz and the scope traces are monitored for the presence of phase inversion, phase shift versus frequency, or amplitude difference versus frequency. And finally, the local delay equalizer is then readjusted to ensure that the audio is in phase at the center of the no capture zone. For purposes of discussion in implementing this procedure, it is assumed that all of the transmitter sites are connected via an RF link as opposed to telephone lines. But if phone lines are used, which is not a preferred method for simulcasting due to the difficulty in maintaining line characteristics, the two receiver method can still be used for optimization, but some additional considerations must be made. For more information regarding these considerations, please refer to Appendix B, which is enclosed with this program. It should also be noted that for systems using RF links and where one paging station is co-located with the link transmitter, this station must still be equipped with a link receiver so that all transmitters in the system derive their audio signaling from common circuitry. In general, two technicians will be needed in most cases to implement this procedure in a reasonable time frame with some means of communications between them. If the link transmitter is co-located with one of the paging stations, one technician should be located there to control the procedure at what we will term the reference site. While the second technician will have to visit each remote site in order to compare it to the reference site. It is assumed that the site with the link transmitter and the co-located paging transmitter can hear all of the other remote sites with a monitor receiver connected to an outside antenna. If the link transmitter is not co-located with a paging station, then a site capable of hearing all of the remote sites should be designated as the reference with one technician located there. In this situation, the technician at the reference site must have a dedicated phone line to capture and control the paging terminal in order to inject test tones into the system, or a third technician will have to be located with some means of communication at the link transmitter for that purpose. For more information on paging terminal setup in this situation, refer to Appendix A enclosed with this program. 
Before beginning the actual procedure, we will need to make some preliminary adjustments for setup purposes. First of all, obtain a map of the area and plot all the sites on it. If a link transmitter is being used to connect all the sites, the approximate setting of the delay equalizers can be determined by calculating the distance or propagation delay from the link transmitter to each link receiver and adding the appropriate amount of delay to the closer sites so that the audio of each transmitter is in phase as it is transmitted from its respective site. To determine these preliminary settings, use the formula now on your screen in which the distance delay in microseconds is equal to the number of miles between the link transmitter and the paging station times 5.4 microseconds. Later on, we will have to make slight adjustments to the equalizer to accurately adjust it to the center of the overlapping no capture zone, but for the moment the calculated setting will be sufficient. Figure 2, now on your screen, represents a typical four transmitter simulcast system with an RF link to all sites. This illustration gives the propagation delay to each site and the respective delay equalizer setting for each station in the system. Remember, the delay equalization is set to ensure that the audio is being transmitted in phase from all of the sites. After making the initial delay settings, the link transmitter IDC control should be checked and set to plus and minus 5 kHz deviation, while the exciter level control is set to plus and minus 3 kHz deviation, with a 1000 Hz tone applied from the terminal. Once this is done, make sure that each paging station also has its IDC set to plus and minus 5 kHz and the RF power output is adjusted to comply with the FCC operating license. At this time, the carrier frequency should be set to the assigned operating frequency. Final frequency adjustments, including any desired offsets, will be made later via the zero beat method. Next, for each link receiver located in a paging station, adjust its line driver output level to zero dBm using a 1000 Hz tone at 3 kHz deviation applied to the receiver RF input connector and also adjust the exciter level control in each station for 3 kHz deviation while the link receiver is receiving the 1000 Hz test tone. After these adjustments have been made and before beginning the procedure, you will also have to disable all transmitters in the system except the reference site and each sequential station to be optimized. Finally, you'll have to verify that the two monitor receivers to be used have identical phase and amplitude versus frequency response. This can be done prior to arriving at the site by using the equipment setup now illustrated in figure 3 in your screen. Using a T connector, connect both receiver antenna input terminations to a service monitor. Display each discriminator output to its own respective trace of a dual trace scope and adjust the generator RF output to fully quiet both of the receivers. And modulate the generator with an audio oscillator using a 1000 Hz tone at 3 kHz deviation. Position the traces on the scope so that one is directly above the other and sweep the oscillator slowly from 300 Hz to 3 kHz, verifying that both traces maintain the same peak-to-peak -peak amplitude and the same phase relationship with respect to one another across the audio spectrum. After these preliminary setup adjustments have been made, we can move on to the actual optimization procedure, beginning with the final adjustment of the carrier frequency. Using the equipment setup in figure four, key the local and distant transmitter and adjust the variable attenuator until a beat note is heard in the receiver audio. The oscilloscope will also display a spike each time the beat between the two carriers occurs. If the system design dictates that no frequency offset is to be used, simply adjust the remote station until a zero beat occurs. But if some fixed offset is desired, adjust the frequency of one station until the beat or spike appears at a repetition rate on the scope equal to the desired frequency offset. If, for example, the desired offset is 7 Hz, the repetition rate would be the inverse of 7 or 0.143 seconds. In this case, the station frequency would be adjusted until a scope displayed the beat note spike every 0.143 seconds. For binary and voice paging, an offset is desirable for the binary portion of the page, while the carrier should be at zero beat point for the voice portion. In this case, you would zero beat the carrier frequency by the standard warping adjustments and offset the binary modulation by the plus and minus deviation controls provided for carrier shift in the FSK binary mode. For example, 
If a digital modulator module or paging synthesizer was adjusted for plus 4.1 kilohertz and minus 3.9 kilohertz deviation in the binary mode, this effectively offsets the modulation by 100 hertz from the carrier's center frequency. Before continuing with the phasing checks, we need to verify that the local station is not capturing both monitor receivers. To do this, we can short the exciter audio to ground on the interconnect board in the remote control chassis of the local station. In doing this, only the scope trace associated with the local station should drop out. If both traces drop out, then either more attenuation will have to be added to the local station via the variable attenuator, or the receiver monitoring the distant station will have to be relocated in order to obtain more isolation from the local one. If everything looks good at this point, we can begin the phasing checks. First, connect the monitor receivers as shown in Figure 5. And by means of the RF link, key only the two stations to be optimized. Inject a 1 kHz tone into the link of sufficient level to cause 3 kHz deviation, and view the recovered audio signals on the dual trace scope. Both traces should have the same peak-to-peak -peak amplitude. If not, adjust the local station exciter level control for plus and minus 3 kHz deviation, and adjust the distant station's exciter level control until the two traces are identical on the scope. Next, Change the frequency of the test tone to 300 Hz. Now, adjust the local station's equalizer until the two scope waveforms are exactly in phase or exactly out of phase, whichever occurs first, while adjusting the local delay equalizer. If the traces first pass through a point where they are exactly out of phase before reaching a point where they are exactly in phase, one of the two transmitter audio paths may be phase inverted with respect to the other. To remedy this situation, reverse the audio connections between the receiver line driver output and the equalizer input or between the equalizer output and the transmitter line driver input. This must be repeated at all remote stations until no phase inversion is apparent with respect to the reference site. With the two scope waveforms in phase, slowly raise the frequency of the test tone to 3000 Hz while watching the two scope waveforms. They should remain in phase and have the same peak-to-peak -peak amplitude across the entire audio spectrum. But if the waveforms show slight phase differences at certain audio frequencies but not at others, group delay distortion or nonlinear delay is present. If the magnitude of these phase differences is severe enough to warrant correction, an envelope delay equalizer must be added to the system. The next step involves making the final adjustments to the local station delay equalizer to ensure that the audio will be in phase between the two transmitters at the center of the no capture zone. To do this, calculate the propagation delay time to the known geographic center of the no capture area using the same formula we mentioned earlier. The local delay equalizer is then readjusted by this calculated figure. Remember, these phasing adjustments will have to be repeated for any two stations in the system, which will have overlapping coverage creating these no capture zones. And finally, adjust the frequency of the test tone to 1 kHz at a level which will cause 3 kHz deviation in the transmitter and verify that the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the two traces on the scope are still equal. If there is a discrepancy, adjust the remote transmitter exciter level control to match that of the reference transmitter. In closing, Following this procedure outlined in this program will allow you to quickly and accurately optimize any simulcast paging system, providing the final and perhaps the most vital aspect of field installation service. Until next time, thank you from National Service Training, and if I may quote an overused but slightly modified quote, good luck and good optimizing.